Eric's preferences can be expressed by utility equals x times y. He's got a monthly income of $800 that he can spend on x and y. The price of x is $20 per unit and the price of y is $40 per unit. Let's find Eric's optimal consumption bundle. Now at the optimal bundle, a few things must be true. Well, we know the optimal bundle needs to lie on the budget line. We're going to be exhausting our income in this case. Also, the indifference curve is going to be tangent to the budget line at the optimal bundle. So let's start by writing the equation for our budget line. Well, in general, it's going to be income equals the price of x times the quantity of x plus the price of y times the quantity of y. So substituting in the information we know for Eric, his income is 800, 20 is the price of x, x is the amount that we're buying of x, 40 is the price of y, and y represents the amount of y that we're buying. Now if the indifference curve and budget line are tangent, they're going to have the same slope at that point. So let's find the slope of our indifference curve and find the slope of our budget line. Now the slope of the indifference curve is the negative of the marginal rate of substitution. And the marginal rate of substitution is the marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y. So we just put a negative out in front when it's going to be the slope of the indifference curve. Looking back at our functional form, we've got utility equals x times y. When I take the partial derivative of utility with respect to x, I get y. And when I take the partial derivative of utility with respect to y, I get x. Plugging those into my marginal rate of substitution, I find that the slope of my indifference curve is the negative of y over x. The slope of my budget line is always the negative of px over py. So in this case, that's the negative of 20 divided by 40, or a negative 1 half. So we said that the slope of the indifference curve and the slope of the budget line are going to be equal at that tangency point. So the left hand side is negative y over x and the right hand side is negative one half. Well those negatives are both going to cancel and I can rearrange this to be 2y equals x. I did that just by cross multiplying. I'm just trying to simplify it down as much as I can. All right. So now we've got two equations and two unknowns. Well, with two equations and two unknowns, we can solve for x and y. The two equations I have are my original budget equation and the equation that was produced by using my tangency condition. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute these together and solve. So 800 equals 20 times 2y, I'm substituting in for x, plus 40y. So that's 800 equals 40y plus 40y or 800 equals 80y, or 10 equals y. So the optimal bundle contains 10 units of good y. I can plug that 10 back into either of my equations. It's easier to plug it into the 2y equals x equation in this case. So 2 times 10 is x, or 20 equals x. So Eric's optimal bundle contains 20 units of x and 10 units of y.